No! So, Dragon Ball Z. There exists a technique in Dragon Ball called image training, otherwise known as visual training. Characters in the show utilize this form of training when they're not in the appropriate conditions for a real physical training session, or when they are recovering from a battle. They essentially imagine themselves fighting opponents or rehearsing fights that they've witnessed to help them become stronger. I'll just have to make do with some image training. That is until I get the chance to fight again. Only you would think of that, Goku. However, does that work in real life? Yeah. What's up guys, my name's Chris Mini. I'm an international competitive cosplayer, an online fitness blogger, and a full-time content creator, helping you to be more shonen. So as I said in the intro, we're talking about Goku's visual training and whether or not it has any scientific basis whatsoever. And in a word, yes, active mental imagery has shown benefits when it comes to motor learning and skill acquisition. This means that if you're a martial artist or a lifter with any type of skill component, you can benefit from this type of training. So the idea of using active imagery isn't exactly new, but I think a lot of recreational lifters are very prone to just dismissing it outright as hocus pocus because a lot of it is. There's a lot of talk about the law of attraction and, and just if you believe it, you can be it. And yeah, a large part of that is nonsense. So if you wanted scientific evidence for all this, well, you're in luck. In 1992, an Italian study was published. Basically, these Italians had studied monkeys. They found that monkeys improved the skill regardless of whether they performed an action or not. So you had one monkey that was following the motion, so let's say it was a squat. It probably wasn't, but here we go. Squat monkey! So you had one monkey learning the squat. That monkey that actually practiced the squat had improved its squat. But on the other end, the monkey that was just watching the other monkey squat had also improved. So that's an intriguing finding of itself because all that monkey had to do was watch another monkey do a movement, and then they also further develop the movement. This study was the first leading idea of a concept called mirror neurons. Basically, the idea of when you watch something like a mirror, your neurons will strengthen that uh, movement pattern. And since that study, other researchers uh, came to the hypothesis that watching an action played an important part of learning certain motor skills. So of course, that study was done on monkeys, but there's compelling evidence that it also applies to humans. A 1994 meta-analysis concluded that visualizations could increase motor skill learning. The degree of which varied depending on how complex an activity was. During the early 2000s, an acronym was created to embody what visual training actually meant, and that acronym is called PETLEP, P-E-T-T-L-E-P, -E -E which stands for Physical, Environment, Task, Timing, Learning, Emotion, and Perspective. The main takeaway from that model is that active imagery is most beneficial when all the conditions are met for when you would normally perform that movement. So for us weightlifting folk, the best time to do it would be in a gym, whilst you're sitting in the squat rack ready for squats, or something to that effect. For a martial artist, it would be when they're in the dojo, and for a tennis player, it would be when they're on the court. I mean, you can do visualizations anywhere, but according to the body of literature and the petlet model, it's just increased when you're in the situations where you would normally be doing that movement. There was also a two-part study done in 2007 from Dr. David Smith's lab, which showed that active imagery is more beneficial during game time. So right before a big sporting event or a key lift, the times where you're on the platform and you have to perform. So in part one of the study, they used hockey players as their subjects. So we got these hockey players and he asked them to do visualizations of them doing 10 penalty flicks. One group used sports specific imagery, so they were on the field, they were wearing the clothes they normally would when performing. The second group was just clothing imagery, so they were wearing what they'd normally wear when they're playing the game, but they'd be standing at home. The third group was just traditional imagery, so sat at home wearing normal clothes. And the fourth group just read uh, hockey literature as a control group. So in that hierarchy, the visualizations was more effective from the first group down to the fourth, which means that the closer you are to the conditions that you would normally perform a movement, the more likely it is that you will improve at it. By how much? Well, the control group that was just at home reading literature, they improved their penalty flicks by 1.14%. The group that did their visualizations on the pitch improved it by 15.1%. And as the hierarchy descends, you can basically expect around a 5% drop off for each group. 
So that's amazing, right? Just by thinking about playing hockey, whilst wearing their hockey clothes and standing on the pitch, they improved their hockey game. So part two of the study involved young female gymnasts. They had to learn a move that was not in their skill set. This move was a full turning jump on a balance beam. So the girls were split up into four groups as per the original study. Group one was actual physical practice of the movement. Group two was using the petlet imagery of the former study. Three was something called stimulus imagery, which we did mention earlier. It's basically just being at home in your normal clothes and thinking about performing the movement. And group four was just a group that were stretching. That acted as the control group. The quality of the execution of the task was performed by a gymnastics judge who was completely blinded. Not actually blinded, just blinded in the sense that he didn't know which group was which. I don't have to explain it to you, you know what I'm talking about. So the group that actually practiced, they improved by 43%. However, and this is fucking astonishing, the petlet group improved by 36%. Stimulus imagery improved by 15% and the control group actually regressed. So that's phenomenal. Actually practicing the movement had the greatest increase in ability, but just thinking about practicing the movement was only 10% less successful. That's an incredible amount of progress in just thinking about something. For something that isn't even physical. So the studies, both parts, provide evidence that Nothing can replace actual practice of a movement, but visualization works. And the closest you can get your visualizations to the conditions you would normally perform that movement, the better. And if you needed more evidence, like maybe this is some kind of outlier study, there's also this one. There's also this one. And 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 this one. So what are the practical takeaways of all of this? It's simple. The literature has essentially shown that it works best when you're in the conditions that you need to utilize that skill. So in between sets makes perfect sense. In between sets of your exercise during your warm up, visualize yourself performing the movement before you actually perform it. So let's say you're a martial artist and you know, you're practicing your drills and whatnot. When you're taking a rest period, just imagine that you're still practicing the drill. Just rehearse it in your head. It costs you nothing but time and you're already spending the time resting anyway. What are you really doing in between sets that's so valuable? You're just resting for three to five minutes. So as you're resting, just imagine yourself doing a lift. Here's an example in this clip. Now, my own control group is that I haven't squatted for two weeks, which is usually enough to detrain me. And two weeks ago, I was lifting 0.5 kilo less and I only got 10 reps. I didn't do any visualizations. This session, I started using visualizations. Now, take that experiment for what it's worth. Obviously, this is just me prattling about in my shed gym, but it's good enough for me. And it's enough for me to permanently include it in my training going forward. One of the most beneficial parts of all of this is that it costs your recovery capabilities absolutely nothing. See, if you're practicing a lift or a martial arts skill, that's a lot of tension on the body. If you're just imagining it, there is zero recovery cost. So with all these points in mind, I don't see a reason why anyone wouldn't use active imagery. But remember, nothing beats practice and nothing beats intensity. Sitting down and thinking about doing a movement will mean nothing if you never do the movement. So as you see, the evidence is quite clear. Goku's visual training 100% definitely works, but it does not replace actual practice. So practical takeaways. Train hard. In between training hard, take proper rest periods. During those rest periods, you're already in your gym clothes, you're already in the gym. Think about lifting the next set. When you're not doing those things and you have some spare time, try looking at someone with a similar build to you performing the movement and learn from them in the same way that the monkeys did from that first study. Thanks for watching guys and always remember, be more shonen.